We're beginning to understand how transistors can be used as amplifiers. We bias them into the saturation region of operation and then superimpose a signal of interest to be amplified. We apply a biasing voltage, VGS, which along with the power supply, VDD, then biases the amplifier or the, the uh, MOSFET into the saturation region. We then superimpose using superimposed in the same term as superposition, a signal of interest that is to be amplified. In this video, we're going to consider this small signal approximation in more detail. As we do so, we're laying the groundwork for a small signal circuit model of a MOSFET amplifier. Now as we proceed, we will again pay close attention to the variable naming convention, con conventions. The upper and lower case uh, letters have particular meaning. Now, as we've seen, under saturation conditions, with the voltage source, the biasing voltage source here, and the signal, we have a number of different terms that we're interested in, a number of different components that exist. At the input, we've got the DC biasing voltage and this signal of interest. In the drain, we have the total current, which consists of a biasing current, capital I, capital D, and there will be a current associated with this small signal that we're going to refer to as little lowercase i, lowercase d, and the combination of those two will be the total signal I sub d. Similar, oops. Similarly, the voltage at the drain will have a DC component to it, a small signal component to it, and the combination of the two will be lowercase v, uppercase ds as the subscript. So the biasing conditions. Given a voltage VGS, we know that the expression for the bias current in the drain is simply that. VDS then, looking at this circuit, is equal to VDD minus the voltage drop across R sub D due to the biasing current, or VDS is this expression here. Keeping in mind that all this must, must uh, remain in the saturation region, so we have that constraint. Now, the total voltage and current. At the input, or at the gate, VGS, the total signal, then consists of the superposition of the DC biasing voltage and the, um, the, sp the signal of interest. I sub D then, the total current, is simply equal to one half K sub N times what we're doing here is replacing VGS with the total signal VGS plus lowercase VGS minus VT squared. Now after some clever algebra, we can expand this expression and then combine terms to give us this expression here. It's pretty insightful you'll notice that this first term here is just I sub D, the bias current. This second term here is a term that is linearly dependent upon the small signal or the signal of interest that we're wanting to amplify. In other words, this lowercase VGS term is being multiplied by a constant. The constant is the, constant is the bias voltage, VGS, minus the threshold, times the circuit parameter constant k sub n. This term out here is proportional to VGS squared. This represents a, a nonlinear distortion that hopefully we're going to be able to neglect. Or hopefully it's not going to be so, when we say neglect, hopefully it's going to be small enough that it's not going to be a problem. Here comes then the small signal approximation. If we, as we look at this, this is a large term. This term is relatively large. VGS minus VT, that's our overdrive voltage. This term here, if VGS is small and you square it, that's going to be an even smaller term. So what do we mean by, or what is the constraint on VGS that we can use this small signal approximation? If we claim or we restrict VGS such that this term here is significantly less than this term here, or in other words, writing it here, we've got the third term is significantly less than the middle term.
Then we can solve this for VGS. Dividing both sides by VGS gives us that VGS must be significantly less than this, or that VGS must be significantly less than two times the overdrive voltage. That then becomes our small signal approximation. If we can constrain VGS, the signal of interest, so that it is significantly less than two times the overdrive voltage, this term here is negligible. And we're left with these two terms. As we've already pointed out, the first term here is just the bias current I sub D. We're going to then refer to this term here as lowercase I sub D, or as the drain current associated, or the drain component, let's see, what am I saying? The component of the drain current related to this signal of interest, and we'll call it I sub D. So the total current then is I sub D is equal to the bias current plus the small signal current. This is significant. We need to pay attention to this. We put in a superposition, two different sources here, and we can then find the current at the drain consists of two corresponding components. This one corresponding to the bias, this one corresponding to the input signal. Where then I sub D is equal to that expression there. Given this linear relationship between VGS and I sub D, it makes us look at this term in the middle. Divide both sides by VGS and we get then what we're going to call the MOSFET transconductance or G sub M. It's equal to I sub D, the small signal drain, <laughs> say it right, the small signal component of the drain current divided by the small signal component of VGS. And it is equal to, and here's our definition of it, it is equal to K sub N, the circuit parameters, times the overdrive voltage. Now let's just take a look at this term, transconductance. Conductance, because it relates current and voltage, it has the units of amps over volts, which is 1 over resistance, and we've referred to the units of 1 over resistance, or the concept of 1 over resistance is known as conductance. The trans part of that expression is because it relates an output quantity, I sub D, to an input quantity, VGS. And so in the sense of a transfer, it relates the output to the input. Once again, let's look at this graphical interpretation of the small signal approximation. VGS on this side, the total gate voltage, and I sub D along here, the total drain voltage. We're then saying that we're going to establish some VGS biasing value that, court, uh, that then draws or has associated with it a bias current through the drain. This then becomes our bias point. As this small signal oscillates around the bias, as long as we restrain it, restrict it to small variations, variations less than two times the overdrive voltage, these variations will fall within a limited range of this otherwise nonlinear, actually quadratic, um, graph or expression. So with it constrained here, we then get an I sub D component that is superimposed, an I sub D, lowercase I sub D, small signal component that is superimposed on the bias drain current. Now, as we mentioned, this relationship here, I sub D, is equal to, again, explicitly, lowercase I sub D, the small signal component of the drain current, is equal to this. We called this expression there G sub M. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're working towards developing a small signal circuit model for the MOSFET amplifier. Here's the beginnings of it. We've got the drain current, the I sub D, little I sub D, is equal to some G sub M, this transconductance quantity, times V G S. So the beginning of our model then has the gate, the source, and the drain. The voltage from the gate to the source in this small signal model will be V G S, 
and the current I sub D is just a dependent, or we model it as an, a, a dependent current source where the current is dependent upon this voltage VGS.